Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and these are your notes on carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are my favorite molecule um, of the macromolecules because they are delicious and amazing tasting. Um, and they're also the molecules that give us energy. And they're made of uh, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Those are the only three atoms that you'll find in a carbohydrate. That's where the name carbohydrate comes from. And they're their purpose is fast energy. So if you think of all the things that you can eat and are gonna give you like, like a lot of energy quickly, like, um, like sugar, um, like starchy foods, simple starch, like simple carbohydrates, those are all fast energy. And we'll talk about why in a minute. Uh, they can also be used for energy storage, for short-term energy storage, not really long-term energy storage. Um, and there are some carbohydrates that are involved in structural components. Uh, typically structural components that are carbohydrates uh, you tend to find in plants and fungus, but there are some uh, structural uh, carbohydrates that are involved in, in your cellular receptors, and we'll talk about those. So the first thing we need to know is that the monomer of a carbohydrate is a monosaccharide. Mono meaning one, and saccharide actually means sugar. So a monosaccharide is a single sugar. That's all that that means. So I'm going to draw a single sugar here. It's a simple sugar. I'm going to draw one here. Uh, you should recognize this from ninth grade biology. This is C6H12O6, better known as glucose. And um, that is the most basic sugar that we talk about in biology and in all human biology because that's, that's the sugar that powers our cellular respiration and allows us to, um, to make ATP, which we use to drive all body processes. So um, a polymer of carbohydrate is gonna have many simple sugars. So we're gonna call it a polysaccharide. Look at that. Not real complicated there. Uh, just for the record, because I'm, again, not going to draw a polysaccharide, I'm going to draw two sugar molecules together. That would be a disaccharide, right? Disaccharide. So um, a polysaccharide is a large polymer, so it's a long chain of simple sugars. Um, and so let's see how those form. They're going to form pretty much the same way that we had in our generic drawing of, um, of dehydration synthesis. So again, I have my two simple sugars and I'm going to go ahead and they're going to undergo dehydration synthesis so I'll remove a water and then those other two remaining molecules will go ahead and form a covalent bond between them. So let's go ahead and let's do that and now I've got them covalently bound together and that is my disaccharide. So that's, that's how it happens. It just happens over and over and over again. So like if you had like 50 simple sugars, you could make a polysaccharide that's 50 glucose molecules long. That, that's it. Okay, so we need to talk about um, some important disaccharides and polysaccharides. So I'm gonna start with disaccharides because they're simpler. So the, the important disaccharide that we're gonna talk about is sucrose. And sucrose is important because that is the sugar that you're the most familiar with, sucrose is table sugar. So if you go into your pantry or you go get a little packet of sugar, um, like when you when you get coffee, that is sucrose. And sucrose is made up of the glucose molecule that we already talked about. And it's also made up of uh, this fructose molecule, which looks, looks like a five carbon sugar, but it's actually not. Like if you look, um, at the, the first carbon after the oxygen. Here, I'll actually use my cursor, even though I don't have like that. So that's a carbon. And then you can see that this is actually a carbon here, and that's not present there. So even though it's only a pentagon shape, so you're thinking like, oh, five carbon sugar is actually a six carbon sugar. So they have the exact same chemical formula. Um, they're both C6H12O6, um, but uh, they're different conformational shapes, What whatever. Anyway, they're gonna go ahead and they're gonna undergo dehydration synthesis and you're gonna end up with uh, sucrose. So that's sucrose. And so it's important that you understand that sucrose is uh, just two simple sugar molecules bound together. Fructose, just you know, for interesting points, is the, the sugar that tends to be found most in fruit, right? Yeah. Uh, and then 
we're going to talk about some polysaccharides that are important for storage and um, and storage of molecules, storage of, of like of, of actual matter that the body might need to use later, and then also for energy storage. So starch stores energy, and starch is actually produced by plants. Um, it is how they store their excess um, sugar, so they actually have it to use later uh, when they're not photosynthesizing. They're not actually making that starch. Potatoes are not, potato plants are not growing that potato so you can go and eat french fries or whatever you want to eat out of the, out of the potatoes. They're, they're using that as a storage. That's kind of like their pantry. Um, so, but starch is an important, it's an important uh, polysaccharide to us because uh, that is one of our main food sources, right? Uh, then, so that is made by plants and it is actually, um, it is a chain of glucose molecules. It's specifically a chain of alpha glucose molecules. You don't need to know the difference between alpha and beta glucose. I just want you to look at, see how like these are all, like the bonds are all pointed down on those. That's, that's what you need to focus on. And then we have glycogen, which is actually made by animals. Like we make glycogen and we actually store glycogen in our liver and in our muscle cells. And so the glycogen becomes like this storage polysaccharide. So it's a bunch of glucose molecules bound together. And then your body has a way to go ahead and release them by sending specific hormones to the liver and the muscles um, when you need quick energy. So specifically, glycogen is gonna go ahead and be released from your liver and your muscles when you experience a fight or flight reaction. So the hormone pathway is gonna go ahead and um, send glucagon to go ahead and release that glycogen and break the glycogen down into glucose and then you have you have energy right so glycogen but you don't store that much glycogen um like it's very it's very like quick so that's why after like you go on a roller coaster or, or if somebody was chasing you and you run away you're like so tired and drained because your glycogen stores have been depleted um and then there's some structural polysaccharides. And so most of these are cellulose, which is made by plants, um, and they use it in their cell walls. And that's important to you in anatomy and physiology because your body is actually not capable of digesting cellulose. So let me give you an example of a food that is high in cellulose. Corn is high in cellulose. And so your body does not produce an enzyme that will allow you to break down cellulose. So your body actually can't break down corn unaided, which is why when you eat corn, you don't ever actually fully digest the corn, do you? You don't. You don't fully digest the corn. So um, that's cellulose. Uh, and it's the reason that we can't digest it is because I'm going to show you. Um, the reason we can't digest it is because like, see these bonds here were all pointed down. They go up, down, up, down, up, down. Anyway, uh, everything in biology is structure dictates function, like structure and function go together. So the structure of this molecule, the, the weird zigzagginess of it, instead of all straight down, makes it so our enzymes can't break it down. We don't have an enzyme that can, can deal with that cellulose. So any breaking down of cellulose that your body does, it does through the use of mutualistic bacteria that live in your um, in your in your uh, your intestines. So when they talk about your your gut biome or your microbiome, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about the bacteria that live in your intestines and help you break down things like cellulose. Um, so that's interesting. The next one is um, oh yeah, cellulose is hard to digest, but starch is easy to digest. Um, the next one's chitin. Chitin is actually uh, present in the cell walls of fungus, and it's also what makes up the exoskeleton of arthropods, so um, like crabs, insects, stuff like that. Um, and so that's interesting, but not as relevant to us. You can actually break down chitin if you consume it, because like if you eat mushrooms, you can break them down, right? Um, and that's really it for your uh, the, the big structural ones. Now, I do want to talk specifically about some structural carbohydrates that you um, have on the outsides of your cell membrane. So uh, if you think back to ninth grade bio, you, you studied the cell membrane and you knew that it was like 
a floating layer with some proteins in it and the proteins helped with transporting stuff in or out. And then it had some receptors on the outside and those receptors kind of told the cell what things needed to come in, what things needed to come out and sent signals into the cell. So those receptors are typically um, long polysaccharides. So there's typically some oligosaccharides, which is just a fancy name for a different type of polymer of, um, of sugar, and, and polysaccharides that form those receptors on the outsides of your cell membrane. So that's it for your notes on carbohydrates. Um, I know I went pretty fast, but really you, you basically just need to know what they're used for and then kind of um, like the specific types and how we use them, like the structure you should recognize a glucose molecule, right? Like you, you should know glucose, but like, I'm not gonna ask you to draw me a sucrose molecule. That's not gonna happen, okay? So if you have any questions, go ahead and reach out to me and we'll set up a tutorial time. Thanks.